For more on this situation, I want to bring on radio host Stacey Washington, who also serves as a member of the president's advisory board, Black Voices for Trump. So, Stacey, when we look at this issue of police reforms, it's something that politically it seems to be divided among the candidates. President Trump, of course, voicing his support for the police, and then Joe Biden dealing with the progressive wing of his party that, of course, wants to defund or even abolish the police. How do you think this plays among independent or moderate voters? Well, defunding the police is an unpopular idea. And, and the reason for that is because most Americans know that police officers are just like any other professional group and will sometimes have bad apples in their ranks. Um, a better way of reforming the police would be to address their union and figure out how to take away the kind of, it's like a blue wall of silence where a bad police officer is actually protected by the union and other officers out of a sense of duty, as opposed to being encouraged to, uh, you know, basically report on the wrongdoings of bad officers. So there, that's the way the reform should happen. But the way it's currently being discussed and the way Democrats and liberals and even Joe Biden, they're talking about taking money away from police officers and giving that money to, say, social workers. Uh, they want to have social workers show up to a, a, a 911 call where someone says they've been raped and things like that. Now, we all know that any situation where 911 has been called can turn volatile and create a situation where someone with a use of force continuum can, you know, actually use force to protect people. And so I don't think it's playing well with independents. I don't think it plays well with Democrats. A lot of Democrats hate President Trump more than they care about law and order, though. So it's going to be a tough sell. I think the president has to do a very, very clean, clear messaging effort at getting his voice heard on the fact that he doesn't necessarily say that all cops are perfect. Rather, he feels that law enforcement should be supported and that if reforms are needed, those are undertaken in a thoughtful, careful manner, which protects people's right and ability to be protected and served by the police officers while giving police officers a certain level of accountability. And you talk about Joe Biden wanting to redirect those funds. In fact, over the weekend, we showed the clip where Chris Wallace said that he didn't want to defund the police. He wanted to redistribute the funds to a different area. And a lot of people saying that they're essentially the same thing. But I want to read you a poll really quick from Fox News. And they asked, do you think the recent backlash against the police has been justified, gone too far, or not gone far enough? And 51% said gone too far, with only 29% saying that it's been justified. So acknowledging that point, the American people do seem to be on generally the same side as reforms, but saying what we're seeing right now on the streets is going way too far. So how should the president and Republicans more broadly capitalize on those kind of numbers? Well, for one thing, everyone can agree that when we're looking around the country and we see 48 days, I, this was actually something that I realized early this morning, woke up in the middle of the night, invariably reached for my phone, looked at a couple of articles about what's going on in Portland um, with them attacking an Amazon Go store and another story of Antifa actually hitting one of the, um, it was a police union office right. and they set it on fire. And this is hundreds of people attacking one building. And it occurred to me, I wonder how long this has been going on. And it actually has been going on for 48 days. In some cities, the rioting has been every night for 48 days. The kind of unrest and unsettling nature of that, that just the number of days there points to a lack of leadership. It's one thing if it's going on for a weekend or even a week, but 48 days, that's almost two months. And so I, I feel like advertisements that say, 48 days is too long. Another day is too long, too much for us to handle. We deserve peace and law and order. We deserve to be able to walk down the street in safety. That's the message that has to go out from the president, from every Republican. And if you have any self-respect, every Democrat, every self-respecting American should be able to agree that the kind of lawlessness we're seeing on the streets of America right now is unsustainable and should not be allowed to continue any further. And I think it's worth pointing out, too, that when we look at these unrest, these demonstrations that are happening on the streets right now, when they do turn violent, it's maybe a thousand people, a couple thousand people, which seems like a lot. But for the community of Portland, as you were mentioning, or Seattle with the chop or even New York right now, right now, people are launching off fireworks throughout the night and it's affecting people in those communities. They're starting to become fatigued by what they're seeing on the streets. A lot of them may agree with the protests, the demonstrations, but this type of unrest is starting to take a toll on a lot of people who aren't in the streets, who have to 
to go to work the next morning, who don't necessarily just want to cause anarchy every day. So I think that you're right. To some degree, the moderate independent voters are going to eventually look at this and say, you know what, this isn't what I signed up for. This isn't the type of demonstration that I approve of. And I think that might be reflected in the ballot boxes come November. But Stacey Washington, I appreciate you coming on, breaking down the idea of police reforms, everything that's going on right now. Thank you.